All right, guys, welcome back to the video. So in this one, we're going to be talking about the Bosch Colt. Now, this is a small, compact trim router, however you want to call it, uh, made by Bosch. Now, if you guys haven't seen any of my other tool review videos, basically what we're going to be covering here is just kind of whether or not I would recommend this tool, what works well with it, and what doesn't work well. I've never used any other compact or trim routers before, so I don't really have anything to compare it to, so I'm just going to tell you guys my personal opinion on this one and whether or not I would recommend it. Now, all that being said, I want to set the tone for this video right at the very beginning, and that is to say that I do not recommend this router. It has one serious issue, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here, but it kind of ruined the whole router for me. So first off, before we get into the super negative stuff, let's talk about what does work well with this. This router is one and a quarter horsepower, which means that it has a decent amount of power to put behind those smaller bits. Now, any compact or trim router like this is limited to a quarter inch collet. So if you don't know what that means, that's that little bit in the inside there. Uh, there's basically two different size in normal routing options. You have a half inch collet and you have a quarter inch collet. The quarter inch is just meant to hold smaller bits, which on a router like this, you don't want to be mounting anything that doesn't have a quarter inch uh, shank on it. So you're going to be sticking with the smaller bits and that's completely normal for this size of router. So that works just fine. A few of the really nice features about this router is for one, it's shape. The overall shape of this thing makes it very comfortable to use. The way that Bosch has set this up, it's got a rubber grip on the back here so you can put your hands in there firmly. And then on the base here, there's two little indents. So you can very easily put your fingers in there and guide the router along an edge. So overall, the shape and the design of this thing is really good. Uh, the cord on the back here also has one of these like ball swivel things. <laughs> I don't know what the technical term for that is, but it's something that isn't on a lot of power tools. You know, a lot of power tools that I've used in the past have just a fixed wire coming out here and they get very stiff and can be kind of annoying. Whereas having this looser connection here does allow for some flexibility so your router doesn't get stuck as often when that cord catches on something. This is also a variable speed router. I don't know what the actual RPM rating is on it. Uh, I don't think that particularly matters to most people. All you need to know is that six is fast, one is slow. Most of the times with a compact router like this, you're gonna be keeping it at six anyway because you're only gonna be using small bits. Uh, the only times you're going to get really slow is if you're using larger edge profile bits. I think you can get it up into like a half inch roundover bit in that same quarter inch shank. So that's a pretty big bit. In that case, that's where you're going to use the settings and just kind of dial it back a little bit just to slow it down a little bit. And so this router also has a lot of accessories you can get for it. The one that I bought was the uh, carrying case bundle, uh, which I threw out the carrying case because there's no point for it. Uh, but it also came with this adjustable fence. So this fence just mounts onto this little bracket on the back here and lets you have some kind of reference surface. Now this fence, although it doesn't have any kind of micro adjustment or anything like that, has worked a bunch of times for me and you know, overall serves a really good purpose. Because most of the time with this router, I'm using like an edge finishing bit, so like a champ for a round over, stuff like that, that you don't really need this edge guide for. But there have been a couple occasions where I have mounted this onto the router, put like a straight bit or a spiral bit in to, and used it to cut a, a very simple groove or dado. And that's one of the things where having, just having this little fence as an extra is really nice. You also have the option with this router to buy a plunge base for it, which again can be a very useful thing to have. Now in most cases, if you're using a compact router like this, you're going to be using it for adding edge profiles. So chamfers, round over, stuff like that. So you're not really going to need a plunge base for it. But there are certain occasions where you might want to get that router into a smaller location and you might need to plunge the bit in. And that's where a plunge base on a compact router is going to come in handy. And so with all of that being said, it might sound like I can highly recommend this router. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I just can't. And because there is one glaring issue with this router and that is the micro adjustment. So I've owned this router for a little over a year now. And so when we take the router out of its base, you can see here that the threads for the micro adjustment are, are cut right into the router motor here. And so what's happened, even though I don't use this thing a lot, is that all of the threads on this micro adjust area here have completely stripped out. They do not work anymore. Sometimes they're able to engage to lift the router up, but for the most part, they do not work, which is extremely problematic when you're dealing with routers. Uh, because one of, the big, one of the biggest reasons you're going to use a router for edge profiles or anything like that is because you can very easily dial in the depth of the bit that you want. So this is the main reason why I cannot recommend this router. And, you know, I, this is a serious do not buy item because Bosch was dumb enough to make such an amazing product. Because like I said, everything else about this router is really nice to work with. The grip, the way that everything is set up, the base, you know, those little finger slots on the base. All of these are super nice features to have, but they completely ruined this by adding in these threads on the motor. Because as soon as these threads wear out, your router motor, which is the most expensive part of this whole setup, is now garbage. And this also goes against the number one principle in any form of manufacturing. The threads on whatever the hardest to replace component is should be very tough. 
So if one of these parts was gonna wear out, either the threads on the motor or the threads on the actual uh, screw on the inside there, the threads on the screw are, are what should have worn out first. These threads should be hard enough and should be thick enough and tough enough that these threads should never wear out if you're gonna use this method. So this is just a massive oversight on Bosch's part and it's taken an amazing tool and just made it a piece of garbage. And so I'm kind of stuck in limbo right now because Part of me wants to try and contact Bosch, send this in for a warranty repair, uh, and see if they'll just send me out a new motor because there's no way to fix this either. I can't go in and retap the threads, I can't do anything to it, and I don't think that they would be able to either. So overall, this is just a really stupid design on Bosch's part, which is really disappointing because a lot of the tools that I have in my shop are Bosch, and they all work really amazingly. Bosch is my go-to brand for you know my power tools and that. Uh, for good reason is because they've just proven themselves time and time again. And so honestly, as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the last Bosch tools I've bought. Now I have bought a drill after this because it was, an, it was on for a good deal, but overall, I don't know if I'm gonna trust Bosch tools in the future because this is just such an insane oversight on their part uh, that, they would make, that they would manufacture a component onto the most expensive part of a tool that is so that wears out so easily. And the funniest part of this whole thing is that this is obviously an issue that Bosch probably knows about, but they just don't care enough to fix their product. Because as soon as you Google this issue, you know, you look it up on any of the woodworking forums where there's any conversations about the Bosch Colt, everyone is talking about this problem about how the threads on their micro adjust dial completely wore out on the motor and there's no way to fix it or repair it. And so the most common solution I've seen from people on those forums is to just buy the plunge base. But the plunge base is also not an ideal thing for most of the uses of a compact router because it now takes a nice compact router. As you can see with this whole overall construction here, this is a nice small piece. And so it takes that nice small construction, adds the handles onto it and a bigger base and everything, and overall makes it a bigger, chunkier router, which completely goes against the purpose of this tool. Now, it's one of those things where I just really wish that tool companies would look back at their products and realize that, hey, we have an issue here. We've got a lot of either warranty claims or just got a lot of people complaining about this online. It's, it's one of those things where companies really need to look back at their products. And so this router has basically two ways of moving up and down. It has macro and micro adjustments. And so the micro adjustments are set with the lever in the middle section here. And that's when the threads are theoretically engaged. And you're supposed to just spin this little wheel on the bottom here. Now I can turn this wheel as much as I want and the router is not gonna move. And sometimes if, it, if the threads are trying to engage, I'll get this clicking going on as those threads are just trying to grab onto the motor. So again, that just shows off the issue there. And so the way that I've been able to make this router work is by putting it in the macro adjustment setting, which is just opening this up all the way so the threads are not engaged whatsoever and I can just move the base wherever I need it to be to try and get it to the right spot. And so the thing here is that this still works as a compact router, as a trim router to add edge profiles, to do some small cutting in that there. It just doesn't work with that micro adjust, which is a big part of the functionality of this thing. And so I'm not one to normally talk negative about a company, especially a company like Bosch, where I use a bunch of their other tools. They all work really good. But this is one of those instances where you're gonna see this router show up in a lot of my videos. And I wanna make sure that people understand that this router has some serious issues and that you should not just copy what you see in my videos and go and buy this router. That is you know, kind of the complete reasons why I wanted to put out this review is just so that people don't make the same mistake I did and think that they're buying a good quality tool just to have it break on them you know, a year later. And so if it wasn't for this micro adjust issue, I'd be able to use this router in a lot more places. But without that micro adjust feature, there's just no way to use this thing to the accuracy level that I kind of expect from my more expensive tools in the shop. And as far as expensive tools go, this is up there with them. And so if you're planning to purchase this router, I would highly recommend looking into some of the other ones. Uh, I know that DeWalt makes a really nice compact router. It also has really good reviews. Uh, I haven't heard anything super negative about it. I've been looking at some reviews of it lately too, uh, because I've been thinking about replacing this thing. So even though I can't personally recommend it because I've never used it, I would highly recommend looking at it uh, and considering it instead of the Bosch Colt here, just because this one has some serious issues. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.